Sermon number one, the calm poise of the master. There are records which show that thousands of years ago, in the secret temples in Egypt, there were people called hermetics, who retired from the world for the purpose of getting closer to divine mind. They separated themselves from all religious thought and made a unity with divine resource, the cause side of existence. They were like some of our scientists, experimenters in the laboratory of being. They tried various ways of prayer and meditation and found that when they used certain words, they came in a very close relation with the cause side of existence. And those words were tabulated, a record kept of them. And it was found that all words that had to do with the real existence, all words that described the good, all words that described health instead of sickness, all words that described power instead of weakness, those words seemed to bring them closer in touch with the great mind, with the great underlying power, and they became apparently just what they held and thought, what words they expressed. So there gradually grew up a brotherhood. This was before the advent of Jesus Christ, and that brotherhood proved, so the history tells us, that words do carry men in or out, above or below the great tide of thought, and that we can, through the use of words, poise ourselves, put ourselves in the consciousness of weakness or power. Now we are carrying out that same occult brotherhood's ideas in unity. The world has become so free from its narrowness and ignorance that it isn't necessary to retire into temples or caves. We know the law that God is everywhere. So let us continue that great work which those brothers inaugurated. Let us hold the true words, carve out of the great substance a temple, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We take this morning some real words and enter into that temple. The central idea of our lesson is the poise, the mastery, the dominion of the man. Now this can be attained through taking words that correspond to that power, that dominion, that mastery. Those words might be selected from a legion, and all bring you to the consciousness of poise, power, dominion, and mastery. But words that would get you closest in touch with that state of mind are those that appeal to your consciousness, your education. What words bring you the greatest realization of power, of mastery? of dominion? Why, you will say at once, words that belong to the supreme mind, that describe that mind. I can think of nothing higher and greater than God. Then place yourself in that divine mind, and it will place itself in you. Invoke God, and you become one with God. That is the law. We are told that in the very beginning of our creation, we were given mastery and dominion over all things. It is proper and right for us to assume that it is in accordance with the law for every one of us to say that power and mastery and dominion which was mine in the beginning is now restored unto me. Let us enter into this secret place with that statement that mastery, power, and dominion which was mine in the beginning is now restored unto me. As you hold that thought, poise yourself. Realize it is true. Our lesson this morning is the realization of the poise and power of the Master. The Master is Christ, and Christ is the name of the Anointed of God, the one of all God's creation upon whom He has poured out His highest power, whom He has blessed and given Himself unto. This is the spiritual man. This is the real of every man. It is the ideal man. The man described in the first chapter of Genesis and that man was given dominion and power over all of God's creations. And there was the demonstration of that man, which leads to self-consciousness, the realization that I am, that is described in the second chapter of Genesis, the bringing forth of Adam. We haven't always understood the relation of these two apparent creations, and the result has been an identification with the one or the other, some people have gone into the scriptural consciousness and ignored the atom. Others, and the great majority of the race, 
have fallen down unto the Adam plane. They knew nothing about the first creation, the spiritual man. But unto each one of the two, a bringing together of the high ideals in their manifestation, constitutes the real man, makes man what he is in Christ Jesus. Christ is the real man, and Jesus is that man demonstrated. Now we are every one of us Christ. It is said by those who have gone deep into mystical understanding that every human being in the world has a definite plane and divine mind, that you are numbered, identified. God knows you especially. You are created for a special purpose, and all of your life's journey, all of your efforts, are tending to the bringing forth of that idea. The very hairs of your head are numbered. God knows you. The creative mind had a definite purpose when you were given expression. But you are free. You must recognize that place. You must learn your number. You must know where you belong in the creative plan.